neither alive nor unliving. I don't get it. Thou wilt. Time's over, pet. Ah, oh, I love this time of year. The dickheads start popping up wherever you look. What do you want, Mizora? Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil, and a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress, Moonrise Towers, and you're getting them out. <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. Should promised soul refuse obeyance or neglect duty, the pact holder shall cast the promised into a vernus as a lemur. I'll make it simple. Will fails or refuses, and he turns to a thick blob of stink flesh and sinks to Avernus. Now, be a good boy and play fetch, pup, or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Mazora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. This may be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Oh, and what condition is that? Your mind links with Will's, drawn in by his increasing panic. What are you doing? Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Interesting. Now, why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash? I've never seen such a fearless display of sheer idiocy. Bravo! <laughs> Fine. I'll play your game. But I amend the pact once the mission's done, not before. Clause F, Section 9. Soulbinder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearers' fulfillment of related obligation. Now, to Moonrise, pet. And do mind the shadows. They've been especially hungry. Always a pleasure. The more bullshit she pours, the more of it I'm forced to swallow. Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the Hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the Blade stands for. Such an asshole. Thank you for sticking your neck out for me. I mean it, but I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. I can already feel her scheming. She won't let me go without a fuss. Trust me on this.
Not a one. All that matters is that we free it. Fail. And I made a mindless blob clawing at demons on the front lines of the blood war. And it means everything to me. I always knew what my future held, and I know I chose right. <clears throat> then we know our mission. All roads converge at moonrise. I was 11 when the Counselor spotted and slayed an assassin who stalked farther from the shadows. I was 13 when she brought word of a goblin warband advancing on Rivington. Her keen scouting saved a hundred lives that day. The Counselor's loyalty to my father is beyond question. She's as steady as Tear's heartbeat, as upstanding as the Sword Mountains. Father's at Moonrise Towers, and we need to save him. They want violence, they want control, they want Baldur's Gate. Who better than Grand Duke Ravengar to surrender it? Who better than the commander of the Flaming Fist to dismantle its defenses? They will infect him, and the city's guardian will become its ruin, unless we put a stop to it. We can't and we won't. The shadows be damned. Not so enchanting as you'd think. The poor tears, the cold wells, they were the blue bloods hosting the fancy balls and drinking from gold goblets. Father's the son of a blacksmith, born with barely a coin in the coffers. He made a name for himself among the Flaming Fist. Brave as Balderan, stubborn as a deep rofe. Daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. <laughs> I spent more time dueling with Father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and a talent for courtly dance. It's been a badger's age since I've twinkled my toes. A drunk ogre could put on a better show. Tempting. Uh, give it some time. Develop a bond and maybe I'll show you a move or two. He brings to mind a story. The Devil with the Silver Tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales. Don't you think? Refuse him. No matter how tempting the offer, no matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you, the cost will be too great. That's because you still have hope. But when he becomes your last hope, remember this. He'll require of you only what you're least ready to part with, and then require more still. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure, but the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. It's said that anyone who bathes in the river of blood emerges as one born anew. It's a lot like that, I imagine. I feel the weight of these horns on my head, curling upwards like a mammoth's tusks. I feel these ridges snaking down my neck, not to mention a few bumps and prongs in unmentionable places. But 
I haven't seen my reflection just yet. Be my mirror. What do you see? <laughs> I can't tell if you're being silly or serious. I'll accept the flattery either way. I suppose I'll grow used to the new me. Horns and all. The people will see a curiosity. Maybe even a beast hungry for their souls. But I will slay their monsters. Keep them safe. And one day they will see the Blade of Frontiers again. Damn it! Why did it have to be Mizora? Why did it have to be Zariel? We're supposed to risk our necks to get one of her assets? What if it's a runaway like me? Or something far worse? I want to believe that as much as you do. Almost as much as Will does. But I just know there will be more to the story. There always is. It's a bad idea to play games with the devil. You'd never win. Not ever. Here's my little treat with their cheeks all flushed. You will come to my bed tonight, won't you? I'm amazed you managed to keep your mind clear enough to fight. <laughs> I've been thinking about our last night together ceaselessly. I'll be in quite a spot of mortal peril if you let me keep distracting myself dreaming instead of doing. We can't have that, can we? It would be very dangerous. I'll be waiting. by the moment. We walk Shah's path now. Best we don't spend too long in her shadow. She expects those who seek to use the weave to do so honestly and with respect for its potential to destroy as well as its potential to save. I doubt she's asked many of her followers to blow themselves up. It's a fate she's bequeathed exclusively to me. She wouldn't ask such a thing if it weren't our only means of survival. However much she's annoyed at me. Oh, you know me, never the optimist. I'm trying to focus on the positives. Truth is, I was living on borrowed time already. Consuming those items would only have kept the orb sated for so long. If anything, I feel more at peace than I have in months. At least now I know my death will have purpose. It won't be a distant bang in the footnotes of history. Wits and blades always sharp. Keep a blade close. Lovely day, this. But now...
Let's move. I do enjoy our conversations. What do you need? I hoped you would come. <laughs> I have missed you. And now you're all mine. And I'm all yours. Until morning, at least. Let's see where the night takes... ready. Never met a skeleton before. Are you, you know, dead? I am not a skeleton. I am neither dead nor undead, neither alive nor unliving. I don't get it. Now wait.
you were... Very well. Seems simple enough. What else do we need? Thank you. 